Many bug hunters believe that SQL injection is dead or SQL injection is hard to find. This is a lie and if you believe it, you are missing out on critical bugs. So in this video, I will bring you up to speed to hunt for SQL injections. We are going to deep dive into the three types of SQL injections. We will also deep dive into how to exactly hunt for these injection bugs. And we will have a look at the ultimate SQL injection tool. But that is not all. At the end of this video, I will show you how you get free access to a SQL injection cheat sheet containing everything discussed in this video. But first, let's have a look at a recent CVE that was awarded a $5,500 bounty, which is so far the highest paid bounty by the WordFence bug bounty program. You might even still be able to find this bug in the wild. Let's briefly discuss the details. CVE 2024-2879 is an unauthenticated SQL injection in the Layer Slider WordPress plugin. Layer Slider has an endpoint with a LS get pop-up markup parameter. This parameter is vulnerable to SQL injection. This makes it possible for unauthenticated attackers to extract sensitive information from the database. But let's understand SQL injection with an easy example. Assume a login page that lets users log in with a username and a password. If a user submits the username and the password, the application checks the credentials by performing an SQL query. In this case, the login was not successful since the query did not return the details of the user. Let's see what happens if we add the infamous apostrophe at the end of the username. Suddenly, the application throws a syntax error. The added single quote closes the username string prematurely, resulting in a malformed SQL statement. Inserting a single quote is one of the most common ways to identify potential SQL injection vulnerabilities. In this case, we can log in without the need for a password. By adding two dashes, which is the SQL comment sequence, at the end of the username, we comment out the remaining SQL statement. Consequently, we will be logged in as long as the user exists. This example shows just one type of SQL injection vulnerability. So now let's dive into the other forms that can exploit poorly sanitized user inputs. First, let's look at basic SQL injections. Consider a typical client-server database interaction. The client makes a request to the server via a URL with parameters. This query is processed by the server, which in turn interacts with the database to fetch data based on the query parameters. The database returns a result, which is then potentially processed by the server and then sent back to the client. The first basic SQL injection we discuss is error-based SQL injection. Similar to our previous example, it relies on error messages reflected from the database to obtain information about the structure of the database. The second basic SQL injection type is the union-based SQL injection. This type leverages the union SQL operator to combine the results of two or more select statements into a single result, which is then returned as part of the HTTP response. The second type is a more covert type of exploitation known as blind SQL injection. We will again look at two variants. The first one is Boolean-based SQL injection. This type relies on injecting an SQL query, which forces the application to return a different result, depending on whether the query returns a true or false result. In our example, this is indicated by a change in the response length, but other more obvious or more subtle indicators are possible. The next blind injection type is time-based SQL injection. Here, an attacker can send a query that forces the database to wait for a specified amount of time before responding. The response time will indicate to the attacker whether the attack was successful. Finally, the last type of SQL injection we will discuss is out-of-band SQL injection. Out-of-band SQL injection occurs when an attacker uses a different channel to launch the attack and to gather the results. For example, while the response from the server might not include any useful information regarding the attack, the SQL query could instruct the database to directly connect to the attacker. However, 
This requires the database server to make DNS or HTTP requests to deliver data to an attacker. Now that we have understood the different types of SQL injection, let's get practical and have a look into how to hunt for SQL injection. Let's say you visit a URL, which has some parameters. First, you want to probe if SQL injection might be possible. Let's look at some simple parameter modifications you can do to test for SQL injections. Of course, you have to try the single quote, but also try the apostrophe, the backtick, the backslash, and some OR payload variations. You can also try to treat the parameter as well as the value as arrays. There are also payloads tailored for different database types, like MySQL, MSSQL, and Postgres. But, as you can see, this can get out of hand pretty quickly. Which brings us to our next point. Know your word lists. There are plenty of word lists to identify and exploit SQL injection out there. I personally like the list by Godfather Orwa, and a shout out goes out to him at this point, since I learned a lot about SQL injection from his content. You can use tools like Burp Suite Intruder or FFUF to fuzz against a target. However, please familiarize yourself well with the contents of your word lists you are using since they can cause a lot of harm to your target. You don't want to be responsible for deleting a production DB full of user data. Please hack responsibly. Ok, back to the fun part. You know how to identify SQL injection, and you have some word lists, let's look at some more advanced injection points. Let's consider this HTTP request to a login page that I found in the wild. There are some obvious injection points here for the parameter values. But you can also try to inject your payloads in the parameters themselves. It can also be fruitful to replace the entire parameter value pair with your SQL payloads, or even add additional ones. You can also try to inject a payload in or after the parameter without the value. The same principle applies to all header value pairs and cookies in the request. Also, don't forget to inject in and after the path. After injecting your payloads, observe the responses and look for the smallest oddities, like a difference in response length, response time, error codes, or simple changes in the response text. These can all be clues that an SQL injection is present. As you can see, there are various possibilities for where to inject your payloads. So think outside of the box and be creative in your approach. Another creative way to exploit SQL injection is via second order SQL injection. These attacks occur when the application takes user input and stores it for future use. This is usually done by storing the input into a database. No vulnerability occurs at this point. Later, when handling another request, the application retrieves the stored data and incorporates it into an SQL query in an unsafe way. For this reason, second order SQL injection is also known as stored SQL injection. Hunting manually for SQL injections can be cumbersome. While there are many tools that can assist you in finding SQL injection vulnerabilities, there is one particular tool that probably every bug bounty hunter is already aware of. SQL Map is the Swiss army knife for SQL injection attacks. SQL Map is a powerful tool for detecting and exploiting SQL injection flaws and for taking over database servers. It has a vast array of features of which I will only highlight a few in the following. Let's get started. You can run a scan on a site with dash u and provide the target URL. If you want to test a specific parameter, you can either add dash p and the parameter name or simply add a star in the URL. Alternatively, you can copy a request, for example from burp, into a file and pass it via the dash r flag. You can again indicate the injection point via a star in your request file. Let's walk through this more complex command. Here, we test a stored request for the username parameter. We use a randomly selected HTTP user agent header value and force usage of HTTPS. The level flag defines the number of checks to be performed, which is a value between 1 to 5 and is set to 3 here. The risk flag controls the severity of the payloads used and ranges between values of 1 to 3 and is set to 1 here. We further want to retrieve the server hostname, the current user, 
current database and to enumerate the databases. Additionally, we turn off the payload casting mechanism and string escaping mechanism. Finally, we use the between script to tamper with the injection data. By the way, if you need to bypass a web application firewall during testing, add the following tamper options to your command. I will add a short description for each of these options in the cheat sheet. That wraps up our deep dive into SQL injection. But if all of this was a bit too technical for you, check out this video where we explore one of the simplest and most straightforward bug classes. Also check out the description of this video to get access to the free cheat sheet where I collected all the information from this video. That's it for today. Thanks for watching, stay curious and happy hacking.